What you are watching is Tai Chi Chuan. Tai Chi Chuan is a centuries-old martial art from China, which is enjoying increasing popularity these days for many reasons, not the least of which is that unlike, say, gymnastics, which seems to be for the teenagers only, Tai Chi is one of the few physical activities that people get more proficient at the longer they practice it, even to a very advanced age. Master Chung is himself 65 years old. One of his senior students is a lady of 77, who started Tai Chi at 65. It takes at least nine years of steady practice to be able to use Tai Chi in self-defense. So people who are primarily interested in learning to fight usually prefer to study karate or some other hard style martial art where reasonable skill comes at a much faster pace. One of the reasons why it takes nearly a decade to learn the self-defense aspects of Tai Chi is that in Tai Chi Chuan, one does not resist an opponent's attack. Rather, one guides and controls the energy that is being directed toward oneself. This requires that the student of Tai Chi must unlearn the natural tendency we all have to tense up when faced with stress and antagonism. The correct Tai Chi response is that of relaxation. In most martial arts, the student starts as hard as he can and tries through practice to make himself harder. In Tai Chi, it's just the opposite. One starts as soft as one can and tries through practice to make oneself softer. One tries to unlearn the tense up, become rigid response. This is the beginning form of Tai Chi Chuan. It teaches how to move in a relaxed and yet controlled manner. It teaches balance, coordination, and grace. The student learns to be aware of what the parts of his body are doing while he moves and how to make them work in the most relaxed, efficient way. The exercise is long and complicated, so the student must learn to keep his mind on what he is doing. The real benefits of practice, as in the practice of a musical instrument, do not come with mere mindless repetition. Rather, they come when one pays attention to what one's doing. Surprisingly, most people are not very good at walking and standing. They do these things all their lives, but they do them mindlessly. When they walk, they lean forward until they are actually falling over. Then they quickly put a foot forward to catch themselves before they fall down. If one were to grab the foot or push it sideways, they would fall over. Tai Chi teaches one to put the foot forward and down on the ground before making the crucial shift of weight. Many people learn only the first stage of Tai Chi. They are interested in grace, balance, and coordination. They wish to avoid the stiffness and brittleness of old age. In China now, the solo exercise is widely promoted and practiced for good health. Tai Chi masters are salaried by the state and lessons are free to all. It is no exaggeration to say that over a million people come out each morning to the parks and gardens in Peking to practice Tai Chi Chuan.
The Tai Chi sword carries the solo exercise a step farther. Not only does the student need to keep track of the movements of all the parts of his body, he must in addition keep track of a three-foot extension of it and know what that too is doing. The sword has weight, yet the hand that holds it through twists and turns must remain relaxed. Perfect balance while in motion is also more difficult when wielding the sword. Tai Chi Chuan have exotic names. Brush aside the grass looking for the snake. Embrace the moon to bosom. Send the bird up the tree. Black dragon swings its tail. Wind swirls the lotus leaves. The lion waves its head. Tiger embraces its head. Wild horse leaps over the stream. Turn over and rein in the horse. Compass points south. Welcoming wind flicks the dust. Follow the water and push the boat. Shooting star follows the moon. Skybird flies over the waterfall. Lift up the curtain. Left, right, wheeling sword. Swallow mouths the earth. Great condor spreads its wings. Moon forages the sea bottom. Embrace the moon to bosom. Night demon explores the sea bottom. Rhinoceros watches the moon shoot the geese. Green dragon explores with its claws. Phoenix extends its wings. Ride encounter left and right. Shoot the geese. White monkey offers fruit. Falling flowers. Fair lady weaves at the shuttle. White tiger plays with its tail. Fish leap over the dragon gate. Black dragon twists around a column. Immortal fairy points the way. Wind sweeps the lotus blossoms. Hands present the ivory scroll. Tai Chi sword returns to its embracing origin. This is Master Raymond Chung. Master Chung learned the art of Tai Chi Chuan in China and has been practicing it now for 49 years. For the last 17 years, he has made his residence in Vancouver. He has taught not only in Vancouver, but in Victoria, Seattle, and Bellingham as well. Master Chung now teaches at his home at 1190 East 48th Avenue in Vancouver and at the YM YWCA in Victoria. He teaches students of both sexes and all ages, from 12 through 70.
For those who may wish to go beyond the solo exercise to learn Tai Chi Chuan as a method of self-defense, the second stage is learning the two-person exercise, or what is called four hands practice. Here one learns two more key skills in Tai Chi self-defense. First, how to feel by the sense of touch what one's opponent intends to do. Second, how to react to an attack with maximum relaxation, efficiency, and coordination. Forehands practice teaches the student how to feel, by the sense of touch, what another person is about to do. This is the skill that women ballroom dancers must develop. They are going to avoid getting their feet trod on by their partner. In Tai Chi, there is a paradoxical saying, you don't hit me, I don't hit you. You hit me, I hit you first. By many cues, one of the most important source being the small muscle tensions and movements in our body that precede movement, the Tai Chi master knows in advance that a certain sort of attack is coming. He is set for it before it gets underway and gains momentum. He is defending, mastering, and controlling it even in the first moments of movement. In Tai Chi, every defense is coupled with an offense. The Tai Chi master takes the energy of an opponent's attack and subtly diverts it to the opponent's disadvantage, and this becomes his own attack. To gain this exquisite tactual sensitivity in response, the body must be relaxed. Tension destroys not only quickness in movement, but sensitivity as well. So here again, the importance of tranquility and relaxation is paramount. This is the second skill forehand's practice gives. As time passes, the Tai Chi teacher begins pushing harder, occasionally testing and probing to see whether the student can remain calm and relaxed. The body comes to be used as a whole rather than piecemeal. The more muscles that the student can bring into play to attain his end, the less any one of them has to tense up and strain. The ideal here is perfect coordination coupled with perfect sensitivity. The next step is to learn to do four hands while moving. This teaches the student how to keep himself always at the correct distance from his opponent. Close enough so that his opponent cannot bring his foot up to kick, far enough away so that the opponent's knee will not reach him. In moving forehands, breathing becomes especially important. The breath goes naturally in and out with the body's movements. After years of practice, the body's movements then become as natural and easy as inhaling and exhaling. Learning to breathe naturally and relax while moving allows one to continue to move without tiring. The student learns to keep turning without getting dizzy. One learns to keep one, an opponent turning and circling. When he advances, one retreats. When he retreats, one advances. After mastering the rudiments of four hands practice, the student learns what is essentially a long, intricate, stylized fight. Each attack is countered, and the countered coupled with a new attack. So as to avoid injury to oneself, the hard parts of the body are used to attack the soft, and the soft parts, the hard. The fist, back of the wrist, elbow, and shoulder attack the torso. The palm attacks the head, the fingers the neck. The two-person applications are really like the solo exercise, but choreographed for two people. The opponents try not to lose contact, so as to keep the advantage that the sense of touch brings. The hand is quicker than the eye, but not quicker than the sense of touch. After a year or so of practicing the stylized fight, the Tai Chi master one day changes the order of things midstream and says, keep on going. The student has begun to spar.
As it is taught, Tai Chi most resembles learning a language or a musical instrument. One first masters a vocabulary and some phrases, or learns scales and fingerings. Then perhaps one masters full sentences or melodies. But the goal is really to be able to carry on a conversation, to improvise. This is the beginning of true mastery in Tai Chi too. It is only now that one can go on to try for eloquence and subtle nuance or phrasing. Indeed, Master Chung has among his students a good number of Vancouver's professional musicians. Tai Chi is the one martial art that they can learn with perfect safety. Practiced, it's carried on in a slow, controlled, and relaxed manner, so there is no danger to fingers and limbs. Tai Chi Chuan has rightly been called meditation in motion. <laughs> 